listen or read along. Improve your English with stories. In Park Lane. The first time Mark and I met properly was outside a hotel in Park Lane. Not literally, of course. I'd been to London only once before in my life and wouldn't have known Park Lane from Piccadilly Circus. No, when Mark and I met, we were playing Monopoly at Jane and Jake's house. Jane and I were friends from the typing pool, and I should have suspected right away she was up to something. Jane's matchmaking skills were legendary. But I didn't have an inkling. And when she asked me round for dinner, along with a married couple, I knew Mark was already there. I recognized him from the factory. He worked on the shop floor, but I'd seen him around the place often enough. That evening, though, we were so embarrassed at having been set up that we didn't speak until long after dinner was over. I've got a great idea, Jane clapped her hands together and said it in that way people do when they've just realized how to rescue an awkward situation. Why don't we have a game of Monopoly? I hated the idea, but it seemed rude to leave so soon after the meal. So I smiled and agreed, while wondering just how long I would have to play before it felt acceptable to go. Not that I was particularly worried about Jane. I fully intended giving her a piece of my mind when we got to work the next morning anyway. Then a weird thing happened. I found myself caught up in the game and, before long, Mark was tapping his little silver sports car along the properties on the board until he stopped on Park Lane outside the little wooden hotel I had just bought for it. That's 1500 pounds, please. I grinned at him like a schoolgirl, which, bar a year or three, I suppose I was. Hmm, Mark frowned, chewing the inside of his lip as if this fact required serious consideration. Over the next 50 odd years, whether I saw it across a Monopoly card, a Scrabble board, or while we watched a quiz show on a then barely known to us invention called television, I never stopped loving the look of Mark's face in deep concentration. I'm sorry, Shirley, he said at last. I don't seem to have 1,500 pounds to spare at the moment. I knew he didn't. From where I sat, I could see he didn't even have 15 pounds. I smiled. So, what are you going to do then? Mark smiled right back at me. Well, he said, still pretending to think very hard. As I can't afford to pay you, maybe I could take you to the pictures on Saturday night instead? Within a month, we were engaged and planning the wedding. We'll get married in St. John's, Mark said one Sunday afternoon when we were out walking in Ashwood Park. And what about the Heathbridge Hotel for the reception? I stopped and turned to him, letting go of his hand. The Heathbridge? 
We'll never be able to afford a place like that, surely. The truth was, although our parents were going to help as much as they could, money was short. Which meant Mark and I were going to be paying for most of the wedding ourselves. And our money was short too. Never afford it, eh? Mark said, grinning as if he knew something I didn't. It just happens all Mr. Bristol's leaving after Christmas. This means there's a supervisor role coming up. And I've got a good feeling that if I apply next year, I'll have more than a little extra money coming my way. Oh, Mark, that would be wonderful, I exclaimed. I took his hand and we began to walk again. I didn't need an expensive wedding. I loved Mark. He loved me. And that was all that mattered. Yet, a new wedding dress would save mom a lot of hard work making one. And Heatbridge was a beautiful hotel. What about the honeymoon? It was a more innocent age back then, and I felt warmth hit my cheeks as I said it. Where shall we go? Well, Mark began his voice holding an odd mix of excitement and matter-of-fact confidence that this was all going to happen. Obviously, we'll spend our wedding night at the heat bridge. Then, the next day, we'll get the train down to London and stay at one of the big hotels in Park Lane. Park Lane? Of course, Mark said. I don't imagine we'll play much Monopoly, though. I blushed and gave his arm a gentle thump. Then what he suggested finally sank in. A big hotel in Park Lane. Who did Mark think we were? Bogart and Bacall? And how exactly can we afford to stay in Park Lane? I said. Really, Mark, I don't think you... But Mark wasn't listening. His eyes had this misty look and I started to wonder if he really did know something I didn't. As it turned out, he didn't. The following spring, I was married in a wonderful dress my mom had made for me. All our friends and family celebrated our big day in the community center next to St. John's and afterwards the long weekend in Blackpool was the best of my life. It's not quite Park Lane though, is it? Mark said as we walked arm in arm back to the B&B on our first night. No. I replied, and it doesn't matter one little bit. Mark grinned and we kissed. Then, as we pulled apart and started walking again, he said almost to himself, Next year, though, just wait until next year. Almost a year to the day later, Mark came in from work and found me sitting in the lounge of the tiny flat we rented above the greengrocers. You're never going to believe what's happened, he said, bursting with the news. I've been promoted, and not just to a supervisor's position. He puffed his chest out and stood to attention like a sergeant major. You, my dear, are now married to one of the management team. Oh, Mark, that's fantastic, I cried. And I've got some news for you too. He gazed down at me, and I'm sure he guessed before I even told him. I'm pregnant. 
What do you think Park Lane looks like? Sarah must have been about five, Richard three, when Mark said it. It's easy to lose each other a little when children come along, but Mark and I never let that happen. With his mom and my mom both eager to look after Sarah and Richard, we still managed our afternoon walks most Sundays. What's so special about Park Lane? I asked him innocently. Mark stared at me, pretending to be shocked. At least, I think he was pretending. What's so special about Park Lane? Why, it's where we met, of course, he exclaimed. I laughed. Hardly, we met at Jane and Jake's house. Yes, when I landed next to your hotel on Park Lane. Which is why one day, when the kids are a bit older, we'll spend a wonderful romantic weekend there. I wonder what's it like, though. Beautiful, I should imagine. Mark gazed off into nothing, and I tried to see what he saw. A long sweeping avenue, perhaps, lined with majestic oak trees, grand hotels with imposing facades overlooking Hyde Park. You really think we'll go there sometime? I asked. Oh, yes, Mark replied confidently. A year later, we had a surprise. After planning to stop at two, I found I was pregnant once more with our third child. So, Park Lane was put on hold while we saved up for somewhere bigger to live. It will happen, though, Mark said. You mark my words. But I never did. What happened instead were nappies and toys, clothes and shoes, university fees and cars, then grandchildren. Mom, Sarah asked one day, I need a favor. I swapped the phone to my other ear and turned down the oven. Of course, dear. What is it? When she told me she needed a babysitter for the twins, I felt bad letting her down. But when I told her why I couldn't do it and where her father and I were going, suddenly it didn't matter at all. Mom, that's fantastic! Then a note of concern entered her voice. Will you two be all right up there on your own? I laughed. Oh, yes, I replied. We'll be absolutely fine. London was tougher than I expected, though. For a start, I discovered there's no underground station called Park Lane. Instead, we ended up at a stop called Green Park. Then an impatient-looking member of staff, seeing the enormous suitcase I'd elected to bring, told me to use a tiny goods lift around the back to get out. And finally, we discovered the lift's exit was still a long way from Park Lane, on the other side of the busiest junction I'd ever seen in my life. But somehow, we got there. What do you think? I was sitting on a bench at the edge of Hyde Park with Mark beside me. Well, and that's when his face crumpled. Mark has always been a dreamer. Even worse, he's a giggler. Once he starts, he just can't stop. Especially when he gets me started, too. Oh, Shirley, he said through fits of laughter. It's... It's... I didn't think he would ever get the word out, so I said it for him. Horrible? He got control of himself. Yes, he said.
horrible. Where is the tree-lined avenue overlooked by beautiful hotels? I nodded to the road which lay in front of us. That must be it, over there. Mark shook his head in wonder. But it's a dual carriageway with a row of tower blocks beside it, he said, and started to laugh again. But suddenly, it no longer seemed funny. Shirley, are you all right? Somehow, Mark's concern made me feel even worse. Oh, Mark, you've dreamed of coming here for so long, and now we have it's awful. If only I'd brought you here sooner, you wouldn't have spent all those years dreaming... I trailed off as Mark's fingers laced through mine. When I turned, I saw he was smiling. It doesn't matter. Doesn't it? No, he replied. It doesn't. That's another thing about Mark. When you are with him, you can't stay unhappy for long. Come on, I said, smiling again. Let's go and find our hotel. It happened to be one of the tower blocks, a flat grey concrete slab with holes cut out for windows. First impressions can be deceptive though, because inside it really was quite beautiful. Later that evening we went downstairs for dinner. As we waited for our food, I gazed around the huge dining room. So, what do you think? I said to Mark. Is this what you expected? When Mark replied, I'm sure his eyes were twinkling. Or maybe it was just a reflection of the candlelight. No, it's not, he said. But I can't think of anywhere else I would rather be. I gazed around once more, taking in the golden chandeliers, the old paintings adorning the walls, the impeccably turned out staff gliding between tables. I know what you mean, I said. It really is beautiful. And then, just as he had outside, Mark started to laugh. What's so funny, I said. You. Mark replied. Me? Mark leaned forward. He reached out across the table and his hand closed over mine. And now I knew it wasn't just a candlelight twinkling in his eyes. I wasn't talking about the hotel, he said. Park Lane, Piccadilly Circus, even Old Kent Road. It doesn't matter where I am, just as long as I'm with you. The End